Friends, today is Tuesday, October 15, 2024, and I want to give us some striking image images in our uh, little lesson today. But first, I want to read 1 Peter 4. It says that we have, in verse 3, we have a new birth into a living hope through the mighty resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Jesus' resurrection power begins to live in us. And because of that power, we have an inheritance that is, get this, imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Or in the old translation, something that can never be spoiled or withered or faded away. It is instead kept in heaven for you and for me. This is the word of the Lord. I have uh, had the privilege of living in Britain and visiting Britain, and one of the things that's different in Britain than in the States is the number of spectacular ruins. Now, there are 4,000 castles, for instance, in Britain, and many of those are in, in, in splendid shape. They're still occupied, sometimes by the old dynastic families and some by uh, the newly rich, and some by this government that has turned them into, uh, into monuments that can be, uh, can be visited. But there's lots of castles that are in good shape, and there's lots of beautiful cathedrals, too, that are, that are worshiping communities. But there are also ruined cathedrals, sanctuaries, monasteries, and they're ruined castles. And it's, it's quite an experience to stand in the middle of a, of a, a now ruined sanctuary where people say, had sung songs and formed Christian faith through the generations. And now the roofs that protected those spaces are open to the sky and the animals and birds fly through and the animals you know, creep around on the earth and there's, there's plants and weeds that are growing up in the midst. Or to stand in, in the ruin of a castle that was once a defense uh, point. Often those are located on the shoreline and you're forced to wonder what has happened to these places that are now ruins. Was it an attacking force sometimes that invaded and burnt the, the castle down uh, or turned it into rubble? Uh, was it uh, an accident? Was it, was it the fact that within the politics of England there would be times when one faction would be in control of the crown and other times another and they would use their power in those times to destroy the castles and the, and the worship places of the folks that were out of favor. We know Henry VIII did this to many monasteries when he took over the uh, Church of England, for instance. But regardless of, um, regardless of whether, of how these places were turned from functioning fo- places to ruins, they are kind of an emblem for me of the power of the tragedies of history and the ravages of time. Because some of these just fell apart through time. Neglect. The wind battered and the storms came and the foundations cracked and they fell down. Um, the ravages of time and the, the um, tragedies of history, we're all subject to them. That's what age and eventual death are. The ravages of time, the tragedies of history. Sometimes death comes from a disease, a tragedy, or an accident. Sometimes it's just age. Just disintegration, the forces of disintegration in life. Our cellular life begins to break down and our amino acids don't fire and our heart doesn't beat. Everyone is subject to that. Everyone will eventually end up like a ruin apart from the power, the resurrection power of God. Because of that power in our lives, our inheritance is different. It will never be a ruin. We have a house in heaven not made with human hands. Jesus has gone ahead to prepare a place. Our bodies themselves will become imperishable, undefilable, and unfading. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that amazing? We won't be subject to what scientists call the second law of thermodynamics, that everything runs down to nothing in the end. Let's pray. Lord, we have experienced in our own lives the destructive power of time and decay at points. Thank you that we have an everlasting inheritance. Help us to live as people with a future and a hope. We ask it in your son's name. Amen.